You're listening to Get Out and Drive Podcast with John Custom Car Nerd Meyer and Sean Mr. Sedan Man Cheryl. We'll be bringing you gearheads all the information you never wanted to know about cars and why they should be on the road and not in your garage. Are you ready to get out and drive? Hey, we're back with another episode of Get Out Drive Podcast. I'm Sean, <laughs> Mr. Today, I'm Anchero. And I am John, custom car nerd, Meyer. Uh, today, we're talking with Gerald and Elias Gabriel. Uh, people may know Elias better as Gas Pedal Kid on social media. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're always talking about uh, promoting the next generation uh, coming up in the uh, industry. And uh, Elias certainly is out getting photographs and everything at just about every show man he's been all life. over the place oh, he's done more media. stuff this year than you and i have done and yeah for sure and uh and he's got an opportunity this year that uh, me and you've never had so right the riding cars and and talk to people so i don't think cool. i've been part of the media in uh in in, in ls fest yet. no not yet i mean but <laughs> elias Yes. He's been doing a great job. Yes. Got hooked up and uh, yeah. takes some awesome photos. People haven't checked him out on social media. Great. Maybe checking him out because, yeah, he's the next generation that's going to be taking awesome photos. Oh, yes. Definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being with us today, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks oh. for having us. Yep. So if I can ask quick, how old are you, Elias? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Wow. The, the I watch your social media and everything, and I'm sure you get uh, help from your dad and help from other people that influence you and stuff. But man, I don't think I was doing what you're doing when I was 11. No, that's fantastic, buddy. I, I still don't take pictures near as good as he does. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. I take pictures and look at him, and it's like put him in a trash. Right. Exactly. So. And he doesn't have to put any film in a digital camera. So yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> don't have to take them to the local. That's floor. great for me too. I don't have to buy it. <laughs> right. Exactly. There exactly. Take 300 pictures and you get four good ones at the photo mat. Right. <laughs> so, so Elias, tell us, how did you get started in uh, taking pictures at the uh, car shows and whatnot? Uh, I just went, we went to car shows and I was taking pictures on his old phone. And then I got gifted a camera and I went from there. Wow. What, what kind of camera did you get gifted? What did you start off with? The Sony A3000. Well, that's fantastic. Oh, nice. So, Gerald, when did you notice that uh, Elias had kind of an interest in taking pictures, and, and how did you kind of help boost him into moving into this uh, hobby? It's something that he's done for a long time. He used to have one of my old phones carried it around with him, pulled it out at car shows, took a couple of pictures. And uh, we started noticing that he would he'd go up to a car and get real close or get these weird angles and he'd see stuff that we go, I don't know what he's taking a picture of. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'd get home and we'd look at the pictures and we're like, oh, that's what he saw. Okay. Uh -huh. That's fantastic. Detail shots, emblems and center caps and valve stems on wheels and just all sorts of stuff well then but then we decided well you know what he's going to keep doing this give him another old cell phone that the right. lens isn't so scratched up right so he's just progressed a little bit and uh midsummer last year a good friend of ours named jack um asked if he wanted a, a camera and if that was okay to offer him and sure so Jack said he had this camera that he had upgraded and this one was just sitting and uh, he knew Elias from, from spending time around the cars and stuff mm -hmm. and thought, you know, give him a chance to, to try it. So wow. he offered it to him and uh, he kind of took it and ran. Um, we figured out that that attention to detail and a, a couple of simple instructions on the camera he was really able to, to kind of, kind of surprised us with his just natural ability to capture things. Well, that's fantastic. Cool. Great job, Elias. I yeah. know I can't say it enough. I look through your feed and the pictures are fabulous. Yeah, they are. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. 
Can you tell them the first picture you took with that camera? It was of the back ends of the Audi Club. Wow, cool. You have any cars that you're specifically interested in or all of them all together? I like all of them, but I really like McLaren's. Yeah, McLaren's. McLaren. Very cool. No specific uh, type of cars, you know, uh, rat rods or or exotic cars or anything you're specifically interested in or mostly just like the McLarens, like supercars? I like the supercars. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Somebody take okay. you for a ride in that rocket ship stuff yet? Driven corner threes, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell them about that. Corner threes has, it's an R8 uh -huh. with some really cool wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. What generally got you into cars and stuff? Has your dad uh, been into cars before or what, how, how come you take pictures of cars instead of uh, plants or worms or birds? Yeah. My dad was into cars. Yeah. Uh, Gerald, do you own a vintage car or a custom car or do you have anything that you've got? I don't have anything vintage uh -huh. at the moment. I've had <laughs> a handful of stuff. I've had C10 square body. I've had 79 Trans Am, mm -hmm. Suzuki Samurai mm -hmm. that was 33s with 512 gears. Mm -hmm. Wow. Imports, both uh, Asian and European. Sure. Uh, currently drive uh, an Audi A3. Okay. Just a fun little toss around car. We did the suspension on it last week, uh, updated the coil overs, put a bigger sway bar on it, some bushing upgrades. Yeah. You know, that one's fun just to, to get out and drive and toss through the corners and, and really enjoy. Oh yeah, definitely. It doesn't fit in so well at the, uh, you know, LS Fest parking lot. But oh, probably yeah. not. <laughs> probably not. So Daryl, do you, what was kind of your spark to get interested in, in cars at an early age? What's, what did it for you? I, uh, I grew up in a situation that a lot of people would, would kind of be surprised and I ended up a car guy, mm -hmm. single mom. She had her car and that was all she was really worried about is keeping it running enough to get us where we needed to go. I was fortunate to have a couple of good friends whose parents were either mechanics by trade or had race cars or sure. just in cars and allowed me the opportunity to learn from them uh, and spend some time at the circle track. Uh, did most of my growing up out in Colorado mm -hmm. and the dirt track and out to Colorado National Speedway and hang out in the pits and just get to learn. That's awesome. Uh, my grandfather was a lifelong car guy. Um, mechanic by trade when he was younger, uh, tinkerer up until he couldn't anymore. So I always looked up to him, but he lived in California, didn't have a lot of opportunity to go out, spend a lot of time with him. Right. So he influenced me a lot uh, without cool. necessarily being around him. That's awesome. Cool. That is awesome. It's always fun to interview a lot of different people in different age groups and things and find out where they started. And uh, I certainly know where I started and where Sean started and mm -hmm. things, but it's great to have this opportunity to speak with you guys and to, uh, to figure out your, your spark right. and what drives you right. and what drives the youth, <laughs> what drives youth. That's very important. Yes. Um, and uh, again, we can't stress it enough. Everybody that's out there listening have to give your information to the next generation. Right. Have to get them. Get somebody else involved. Yeah, don't keep it to yourself. Right. Just because I spent all my life learning this the hard way and right, right, right. Share it with other people. Right. It's the only way to keep the hobby, the industry alive, mm -hmm. is to share your knowledge with other people. Yep. I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, it certainly helped with uh, with social media, guys. Um, and I'm glad you guys are using it. Mm -hmm. It's helped with social media to share information. And, and, uh, you know, if people ask you about how you take pictures and what you do and how you hold the camera and when you take pictures and all that, share your information. You may not been doing it as long as the next guy, but he may still be able to learn from you. Yeah. And that's super important. That's yeah. Super important. As a restoration mechanic, I'm kind of set in my ways, but if somebody, right. somebody younger has figured out a different way to do something mm -hmm. than me, I still learn from younger guys. I, I learn every day. Right something new. 
mm-hmm. you know, no matter how long I do things, you know. He's had some good opportunities with some of these other photographers that he's met mm-hmm. that have done just that. Mm-hmm. That see a, a little guy out there trying to do something that you know, a, a lot of kids don't do. Right. And he's he's had he's had some really awesome photographers take some good time with him. That's great. Good. Yeah. Soaking awesome. the knowledge when you can. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's opportunities that not everybody gets, right. You know, your dad's taking his time and other photographers and other people in your life are taking their time to help you out, man. Make sure you can soak in all that information and make sure uh, people dig what you do. Somebody that's helping to guide you around or open doors for you and get you talking to people and, and, and uh, get your name out there. Anybody, you know, uh, Carrie Strange. Tim and Carrie are uh, Tim and Carrie Strange are good people. Mm-hmm. We've uh, I've known uh, I've known both of them for wow almost thirty years, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they're they're pretty cool people. They'll uh, they'll unlock some good doors for you. And I saw you were with uh, Tim and Carrie at LS Fest. Is that right? I saw that uh, the uh, the media vest. Yeah, the media vest you've got. <laughs> they let you keep that thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, there you go. That's an awesome souvenir. So is that the first time you got to go in uh, with a media vest anywhere? Yes. <laughs> it unlocks a lot of doors, and, and you certainly get to go places where the regular folk don't get to go. Learn any uh, cool tips and tricks from other photographers while you was there with that one? A, a couple of photographers lately, a couple of them that he's followed online. For sure. Well, and few that he looks up to. Yeah, social media has done uh, pretty well at getting you introduced to some other people and uh, get people interested in your brand and, and interested in your, uh, your, your feed. You see other photographers kind of gather around you or they talk to you a lot? He, he did get to meet um, Evan Smith. Okay. The official Ford guy. Is that his Instagram? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. It's- who was kind enough to spend a little bit of time with him and let him hold one of his big track cameras. Wow. Nice. You get out to go to other shows uh, other than in, in the Midwest? Uh, no. No? Had kind of been traveling a little bit around the Midwest and staying, staying around here? Yeah. Because we're not very far from you. We're in St. Louis. Yeah. That's a doable drive. We'll get up there soon. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, there's not been a whole lot in St. Louis going on this year, believe me. No, it's uh, <laughs> COVID's put the dampers on everything. Yeah. So. But next year, next year. Next year. Always going to say that. Next month. <laughs> All right. So, Elias, uh, I know you're on Instagram pretty big. Uh, is there any other social media? I mean, John and I are kind of older guys. I mean, we barely know how to use Instagram and, right. and, and stuff as it is. Is there anything else you utilize that uh, – those of us that are older don't know about yet? Uh, no. No, just Instagram? You're not into the TikTok or anything like that? So no Facebook page for you yet? Uh, my dad does the Facebook okay. page. Yeah. So we transfer his Instagram post over to a Facebook page. Okay. okay. Oh, just doing mirroring? Basically, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah something else I got to know about here real quick, too. Right. The socks. What, what's up with the socks? You're always wearing cool socks every picture I see you in. I just like have, having the fun designs on them. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of your signature, huh? <laughs> cool. How long have you been doing this? How long have you been taking pictures of cars? And Do you do video or you only have pictures? Just pictures, and I've been doing it for a little over a year. Mm-hmm. So you manipulate your own photos and, and do things afterwards and kind of play with them a little bit, make them sharper and clearer and, you know, get the, the, uh, the fat guy in a t-shirt, you, you get him out of the picture in the background and all that stuff. Or you, you mess with pictures afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. You like doing that stuff, a little editing in the back end. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a lot of his pictures, he ends up pretty much using as he shot them. He, really? Really? Little minor tweaks of lighting and color, but right, a lot of stuff's right off the camera. You're that good a photographer. You can learn how to frame everything and how everything goes. I see you sprawled out on the ground. Yeah, all the time. You got that stuff set up. Trying to get tripped over. <laughs> <laughs> Any cool stories? Nobody stepped on you or anything while you're taking pictures. You got to be pretty patient, or or uh, you go there really early. Or what's your what's your secrets on taking pictures? I haven't been stepped on yet. (laughs) (laughs) 
to get there when it opens and yeah. take pictures all day. Yeah. Stay late. Yeah. Go early, stay late. Go early. Come in first, leave last. Yep. That, that's a good work ethic, right? That is a really good work ethic. I'm sure uh, later on uh, you'll, you'll certainly use some of the things that you've learned from taking pictures and being patient and making sure all the people that aren't paying attention to you are walking in frame. You're trying to take a picture and there's some person that's in front of you that's busy staring at the wheels in this car for half what seems like a half an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. I've taken yep. my share of car show photographs. You know, I know Sean yeah. has. Yeah, I don't take very good pictures. Don't take very good I pictures? I do not. I know uh, I've, I've taken quite a few pictures for, for magazines and quite a few pictures and things that covering shows myself. And you have to be very patient. Sometimes you need uh, handlers to make sure you get people out of the way, mm-hmm. keep somebody out of the way of your frame, you know. Is that what your dad does for you? Sort of. Sort, sort of. of. <laughs> sort of wrangling sort of wrangling people out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's hard when he's as little as he is. Yeah. And then you've seen the pictures where he's in this little tight compact crouch. Uh-huh. Right. So he's eight inches tall in total, hiding with a camera trying to get his picture, and people just don't see him. Right. Right. That's why I asked. I mean, because you know, I've had my hand out and I've been kind of waiting and for pictures and then some guy walk past me and stand on my hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From what I found, people just don't pay attention no matter how big you are. Right. They just walk in front of you and exactly. they're so focused on looking at the car or whatever it is. Drinking their lemon <laughs> shake up, eating yeah. their turkey leg. <laughs> Where do you plan to go with this? What are your hopes to go with this? Would you like to do it professionally? Would you like to be a professional photographer later on? Or that's just too big of a thing? I would like to at some point. Yeah. We'll make sure that all the, everybody's listening from uh, hot rod magazine and from everybody else that's going to magazines that are going to digital content, mm-hmm. gas pedal kid on Instagram. Yep. Make sure you follow them. Look them up, follow them, look them up, follow them. I know you're taking pictures of a lot of things. You like the McLaren, you get a dream car that you'd like to have or something you'd like to like to build or work on or possibly get when you, uh, Get to be 16. What do you want for a first car? For a first car, I want a Ford Focus RS hatchback. Oh, that's yeah. it. Those right. are neat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Are you uh, collecting Hot Wheels, building model cars, doing any kind of anything, you know, in related to cars? Any, collect, any cool toys? I collect Hot Wheels. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. How many you got? Uh, I have a few hundred on my wall and then a huge tote of open ones. Yes. Cool. So you, so you keep the really cool ones in the package, put them up on the wall? Yeah. <laughs> Smart thinking right there. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly right. You do any kind of photography or anything with uh, die-cast cars or, or anything else other than full-size cars? I've taken some pictures of just, like, I bring a hot wheel and try to find it uh-huh. in the car. So, and then I take a picture of it with the car. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, like taking a taking a die cast to the show and try and find a picture of the real car with it? Well, that yeah. sounds fantastic. That's a that, great idea. That's a, that's a cool idea. I never thought of that. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a yeah. great idea. Yeah. So, so Elias, you want to give any shout outs to some of the uh, photographers you've met and uh, have helped you in the last uh, few months, year, whatever? It's yeah, been. people people that you know, you can stand up and say, I know this person. Man, he seems cool. Who have you met? I met Larry Chen at mm-hmm. no Mo Party weekend. Yeah. Talked to Adrian Berryhill and Lou on Instagram. You might tell them who Lou and Adrian are, or they shoot the Street Outlaws. Oh, okay. okay. I got to meet Cletus, mm-hmm. Maryland. Yep. Uh. 1320. 1320. I haven't met him yet, but he seems pretty cool. Yeah. He's been he's been trying to send people the pictures he's taken. Sure. Uh-huh. Getting uh well, um tell him about Derek Kelly and Mike Lau. I got to meet them at Streetcar Takeover and I offered them one of my stickers. Okay. 
and they asked where the where I wanted it, and then they put it on their Bam Bam Mustang. Wow. Oh, cool. Well, that's fantastic. You got your stuff running fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be your fastest sticker yet. Yeah. Okay. I've got one of your stickers on Saddle Tramp, but it certainly isn't very fast. So. No, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not doing it that quickly. So, well, so awesome. Elias, you uh, sent some of your pictures to us. Uh, uh, here we see you sitting in a uh, what was that? A yellow Corvette? Yeah, it looks like a. It, that was a uh, Good Guys in 2014. Wow. Okay. 2016. 2016. 2016. And that's Schmitty's 48-hour vet that Tim helped build. And I got a poster. I have a poster of it that the driver and Tim signed. Yeah. Oh, very neat. It looks like it's got a uh, Ride Tech Tiger Cage in it. Is isn't it like built mainly out of ride tech stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a ride tech forty eight hour build. Right. Yeah, well, they they did that car at uh, at SEMA uh, in twenty sixteen. They built that car uh, completely in front of everyone uh, at at SEMA, I believe. In forty eight hours. In forty eight hours. Drivetrain swap, wiring, uh, tiger cage. Uh, chassis, suspension, everything. Yes. That's pretty ambitious. <laughs> yes. Yep. They've done several of 48 hour builds. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah. 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 That's ridiculous. It is. Lots of talent in that group. Yep. Yes. Very much yep. so. I, that day I got a cone that had been run over by one of the autocross cars and it got broken. And I asked Miss Carrie, what what would happen to it? And she said that it would just get thrown away. And I asked if I could have it. Yeah. And then all the drivers signed it. Oh, oh man, that is that awesome. Is that is awesome. <laughs> That's one heck of a not, souvenir. Not driver. People like Al Unser Jr. Uh huh. Bobby Unser. Kyle Tucker from Detroit Speed. Mm -hmm. Tons, tons of them. That was one of the days I knew I was I was in trouble. He was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. One of those supercars you said you liked. Is that is that the recharge rally that when it came through Nashville? And they gave me a special official rally year pass right and then i went in and took a whole bunch of pictures of it wow of the cars wow that is crazy that's a neat shot that that truck in the background on that one uh-huh truck air oh truck. i see it yeah it's on air ride right they, they called it slamio that's neat. Oh, more supercars. And you laying on the ground, taking some cool shots, I'm sure. Yeah, that's the same Lambo that was in the last picture. Right. Well, see, you get into your work. That's laying cool. On. You can tell when he's had a good day at a car show or at a, at a meet because he comes home, his legs are dirty, his arms are dirty. <laughs> yeah. That's corner three, sorry. It's the one I was talking about earlier. Yeah. And I was just kidding and go through that opening that's lit up neat that's a pretty cool shot yeah it that was a streetcar takeover when he was giving me my media pass you had fun that day took a picture yeah. of things lots of stuff cool tell him how late that day went that we didn't leave till like one in the morning wow and we got there at like eight <laughs> that's putting in a long day that's a long day does time fly when you think you're at the at the show and you don't realize how late it is yeah yeah <laughs> well that's when you know you're in it you're not coming there and two minutes later you're saying dad can we go home right 
you're saying, do we have to go home? Yes. It's <laughs> probably dead soon. Son, can we we've, we've had some yes. friends ask, you know, about going with us to events. Right. And have to warn them. They, and these are grown men. These are car guys. Right. Like, we're there as long as he wants to be there. Right. And he doesn't like to leave before the final run. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. That was at the streetcar takeover, wasn't it? Yeah, the streetcar takeover again. And I was up on the tower at on the side of the circle track getting drift pictures. I got some cool angles from there. That's when I got to ride in Jonathan Cash's drift car. Uh, <laughs> you are he's lucky good. lucky lucky man that's fantastic yes he's a formula two drift car yeah formula formula drift pro yeah. two. Oh, formula okay. drift pro two okay sure tell him it, that was a lot of fun he took me for two laps and i mean with the other cars. <laughs> Neat. That is. I, I've never ridden in a drift car. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm going to start having to hang out with Elias and his no dad's doubt. more. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. <laughs> that is awesome. I was off outside of the the back mm -hmm. right, in a safe area, uh -huh. the only area where spectators can go. Right. I'm trying. Deal with my cell phone while they're out there side by side with another car, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour sideways, just burning tires off. Wow. It was him when he got out. You can see that smile. Hoonigan socks. <laughs> yes, definitely cool socks. That is at German Cars and Coffee, or a green GT3 RS. I think so. Yep. Signal green, right? Signal green, yeah. Green, let's go. I was trying to get a reflection shot in that puddle. That's that compact squat. There it is again. <laughs> yep. Just cars and coffee. Getting a picture of the C8 with the old truck. Just getting the very different cars. That's, uh, that's a pretty good example of the diversity that we see when we're at Nashville Cars and Coffee. Okay. It's a huge event. Thousand cars show up, but it's anything. Anything you can think of. Right. Lifted me as slammed me out of slammed me out as <laughs> bag full size minis, hot rods, muscle cars, new old everything. It's a fun event. Cool. Monthly event. Just a just a free public deal. Yeah. That is when I was doing Lose edit challenge for because he posted that picture and said that he was doing an edit challenge for anyone that could edit. And then, so I did that and sent it to him. Is that photo on Instagram? Uh, that is. I mean, it ended up on Instagram. The edited yeah. photo? Yeah, Lou is one of the photographers that has kind of reached out to him and sure. they message back and forth. He has a group message with him and Adrian, who we were talking about earlier. Right. But he'll send him a picture and say, hey, what do I need here? You know, what adjustments, what settings for this? Really? Oh, that's cool. And uh, Lou is with the farm truck and Asian. Yep. So he's their photographer, just to kind of put those pieces together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's Good at context. OS, yeah. That's at OS Fest with Tim and Carrie when I got my media vest for <laughs> the event. If you look close, you can see that Carrie did a little modification on it to try to shrink it up a little bit for him. <laughs> I see that. It looks kind of big. That's when I got to meet Cletus. 
at LS Fest. <laughs> I gave him my sticker. I don't know what he did with it. Right. Yeah. But I had a picture of him holding it up while he was in his drift car. Yeah, I gave him the sticker, and then a couple hours later, Cletus saw him in there in the you know in the no zone, if you will. Mm -hmm. I passed on caution tape because he's special. Tell him, tell him what happened. Tell him that little inner. He saw me and looked over so that I could get a picture. And then he reached down and grabbed my sticker out of the center console so that I could get a picture of him holding it. Nah, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Then I have socks there again. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's the picture of him holding my sticker. Ah, cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. What a great shot. <laughs> and that's with Drop from Big Industries. When I met him. He was like, want to get a picture where it looks like we're fighting? And I was like, sure. <laughs> then, you guys may know his uh, wide-bodied Toyota Helix, little mini truck that he built on a road trip all over the country. Well, there's a place not very many people get to go. No. That that's with Sparky. He was like, "Come out here and get some pictures of this car, because that's Cletus's friend doing the burnout competition." And Cletus is standing right there. Mm -hmm. um, it might be an advantage to not having the big lens. You know, the the big lenses they can stay off to the side where they're supposed to be and get that shot. Uh -huh. He can't. Really that far. <laughs> <laughs> That's my logo. So you've got that one in your uh, in your other logo for the the round sticker. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Wait, cool logos. Well, man, it's been a ton ton of fun talking with you guys. So, Elias, I gotta ask, what's under that hat? I got a mullet. Mullet. Nice. Oh, man. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, you know you have to get a Mopar or a Camaro. What would you say? Like Mopar or an 80s Camaro. 80s Camaro. Yep. There you go. That goes with that really well. Well, that's awesome. Well, awesome. Uh, I have had a, uh, a fun time talking with you guys. Yep. Uh, figuring out what you do. And uh, uh, here's your time for shout outs. Let's uh, have your social media and everything, and we'll uh, we'll make sure people are following you. Tell them where to follow you. Gas Pedal Kid on Instagram. Definitely. Definitely. Follow Gas Pedal Kid on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, at Gas Pedal Kid. Uh, they can DM you pictures, and uh, hopefully people get to meet you or see you at another show. And uh, from your social media or from uh, uh, our Get Out and Drive interview here, hopefully somebody will – See you and recognize yep. you. They'll they'll run up to you and have you take pictures of their car, and uh, I think it'll be great. I can certainly uh, can't wait to when we get to hang out with you guys in person. Yep, and, we'll, uh, we'll run across you at some event uh, soon. Oh, oh, definitely so, yeah. definitely so. We'll hang out for a little bit. We'll have some fun, guys. Thanks for hanging with us today. We'll get him to open up some more too. All oh, right, I'm sure it'll take a golf cart and some some uh, some fun, and we'll yep. get it going. Yep. Sounds great. Awesome. Thanks a ton, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Hey, Elias, what drives you? I like to take pictures of the cars and the sounds and smells of the racetrack. Hey, Gerald, what drives you? The passion uh, that he shows when I get to stand out there and watch Elias just get into his element. I love to just stand back, enjoy the sounds, the smells, the sights of the car shows and the events, and watch him just get that big smile on his face and get into his element and really just do his thing. Sean, yeah. not only just with the podcast, uh, we have a ton of stuff on social media and uh, pretty good following. We yeah. have people sending us stuff on on instagram all the time well, what do you got and uh, i've got this one thing here from nate's 
63 Falcon on oh, Instagram. Yeah. He asked us uh, if we were able to travel in time and witness any car to be created, what would it be? Oh. You have an answer for that? I've got mine. I mean, I don't any, know if any you've got car. your answer. Any car being created. Hmm. Like what, what car made a huge impact on the automotive industry? Boy, that'd be a tough one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You, you, what do you think he's talking? Like a production car or? I, it it says any car. any car. I mean, he's pretty pretty broad. Wow. Okay. Broad brush well, there. I want to kind of go with. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to go back and hang out in Shelby's uh, little oh, camp. Oh man. When he's developing. Uh, Yep. The, the race car for Lamar. Yep. Yeah, I think that would have been a pretty cool era just to be a yeah, fly on the wall. The and, GT40 time yes. and the Ford versus Ferrari uh-huh. time and the birth of the uh, Cobra. Right. And the birth of the Mustang Cobra. Right. You know, that uh, that, that Shelby Cobra R yeah. Mustang. Wow. I, I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. My, my answer is uh, Tucker. Tucker. Preston Tucker yes. and the whole everything behind Preston Tucker mm-hmm. and the development of his vehicle and all that type of stuff. And is it true or was it true that the big three were that super scared of him with disc brakes and fuel injection and seat belts and crash worthiness and all that type of stuff? Yeah. Um, because I hear, and I'm certain everybody, and I have, everybody's seen the movie, uh, Tucker, The Man mm-hmm. and the Machine. I want to know if that is Hollywooded right, or how much of that stuff's true. I really would like to be right. there and be a fly on the wall in yeah. that situation. That'd yeah, cool. those, those cars were certainly well ahead of their time. That'd Very be, much ahead of their cool time. They had people the real scared. Story. Yeah. <laughs> Our next one is from Torque Addict on Instagram. Okay. He asks, if you were to start with a clean slate, a car that needed basically everything, would you build it as a resto mod type or pro street car? Ooh, good question. Yeah. So for me, that's going to kind of, it's going to depend on the time of day. Because mm. I... The humidity? Uh, yeah, the humidity. Yeah. There's so many different cars I want to build. So, <laughs> and, and you know this. Right. I'll talk about one car 10 minutes later. I'm off onto another build. Yeah. Right. I'm like chasing squirrels out in the yard or right, something. Right, but, right, right. But uh, I'd have to do, in my mind, kind of a, a mix up between the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to do, at, at this given moment mm-hmm. in time, uh, a Tri 5 Chevy mm-hmm. and, and 55, 56, 57, any of them. Right. Uh, Pro Street. But something that I could drive across the country, right? Maybe a, a twin turbo LS, mm-hmm. uh, AC stereo, mm-hmm. just you know, right? Nice, clean, simple, functional, you know, AC. So my wife could get in, we could kick on the AC, mm-hmm. you know, somewhat quiet, right? And just uh, yeah, get out and drive and, and right. enjoy it, right? I I think today, and this is going to be out of left field, and you're going to give me the crazy look, okay? Pro Touring 63 Riviera. Hmm. Black. All right. Tan interior car. I would probably put an LS in it, disguise it as a nail head. Mm -hmm. Um, All the amenities, power seat, air conditioning, power windows, all all, all that type of stuff. But I want it to be relatively stock, maybe even enlarged hubcap looking billet wheel. Okay. But not crazy change body. Mm-hmm. And those cars are meant to be driven low, slow, just, I just want one stock appearing on the outside, but just a mover. Yeah. I think that's that's my pick. Gotcha. <laughs> Sean, we got lots of listeners that are very proud to get out and drive. They're always sending us pictures and stuff on uh, social media. Oh, yeah. We see a lot of cool stuff come to us. Yeah, yeah. People are really proud of their cars, man. I've got this one thing here from a listener uh, at C10 Joey on Instagram. He's got a really cool white uh, 82 step side. Mm-hmm. Pretty slick little truck. Yeah, uh, look neat. Like it's got polished uh, five-spoke Americans on it and uh, dropped a little bit. It's clean. Yeah. Yeah, pretty clean truck. I found uh, also... It's from a listener uh, at Little Red Pantera. 
She got a fantastic looking, fantastic looking red Pantera. Oh, oh yeah, it's a super slick looking, tr- super slick looking oh, car. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's a it's a really cool Pantera. And uh, also, she's got a uh, fairly rare uh, pink pearl late model Challenger. I like that, and that's uh, pretty slick. We've got uh, tan, looks like a forty-seven Ford sedan uh, from listener at. Flat out underscore 51. Uh, you'd like that for your Steelies and Dogs page. Man, that's so cool. Yeah. Yep, I yep. like that. That is fantastic. I had uh, a listener at Roadhammer.19. We like the C10s. Mm-hmm. This is looks like a probably 70 71 C10. It's orange. Oh, yes. Man, that's pretty cool. Very slick. Yep. Anybody want to send us pictures of the vehicle they use to get out and drive? Certainly uh, send it to us. Send us a DM uh, on uh, Get Out and Drive on Facebook. Send us information uh, uh, through email also at info at getoutanddrive.com. Send us your pictures. I know everybody's proud of their cars yes. and trucks and everything that they use to get out and drive. Uh, we'd love to see it. Yeah, looking forward to seeing them. Yep. Sean, I'm going through social media. Yeah. We get uh, lots of information, lots of feedback from our listeners. Uh, Got a DM from uh, Instagram user Quick55 Chevy Gasser. Oh, yeah. I know who he is. Yeah, He's got a pretty neat car. Yeah. Uh, He sent me this DM, man. It's awesome. Oh, let's hear it. Yeah, it's about uh, our uh, Driven to a Car Show episode. Okay. And uh, I know we talked about trophies and car show critique and uh, car show etiquette. Yeah, the three dollar bowling trophies. Yeah. Yes, the three dollar bowling yeah, what, trophies. What does he got to say? Yeah, he's he says uh, just started listening to your podcast. I'm on the second episode where you guys were talking about the trophies. Says I had a '68 Dart, stock 318 tunnel ram and headers, centerline wheels, rattle can primer, and I drove it every day as it was my only car. Uh, This was probably 10 years ago. We went to a Mopar show. We won third place. says, not a big deal, but I didn't have hardly any money in this thing. And there was a guy there that told me my car wasn't a street car. What? I don't know. Because it has a tunnel ramp? I guess because it has a tunnel ramp. Mr. Race Car, I guess. Uh, Okay. (laughs) It says, uh, I I told him I drove it daily. He called me a liar. He went to the judges and argued his way into third place. Oh, good grief. They took a pocket knife, peeled the third place plaque off my trophy, and told them they would send him a third place trophy, and they would send me a fourth place plaque to put on my trophy. Mm. Really? Really. <laughs> and he says, if I remember right, I threw the trophy away. Never did get my fourth place plaque either. Yeah, you know, I, I <laughs> honestly, I'd have probably thrown the trophy away right in front of the judges. Right. Probably never went back to that show again. Oh, what and a then mess. tell the other guy, you know, man up, don't be scared to be driving a car with with a couple of carburetors, dual quads, whatever. Right. I mean, the street car is just, you know, whatever you're willing to drive. Right. You know, I mean, there's guys driving around cars on uh, uh, Speed Week and everything. They're pulling a trailer in the rain. Yeah. You know, with a seven second car. Right. I mean, people are silly. Dan's got a pretty cool car, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, really cool uh, 55. Uh, kind of has a, a two-lane blacktop vibe to it. Right. Saw that. Uh, blown big block. Mm-hmm. Uh, automatic car, it looks like. Neat. And, uh, yeah, he's always posting videos of him out driving it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's certainly ain't afraid to get out and drive in that car. And, <laughs> and uh, kudos to him for doing so. That's, yeah. that's it sure what it's looks all awesome. about. Yeah. It looks awesome. Anybody out there has got uh, information or fun, silly, cool stories, send them out to us. Uh, you can DM yeah. us on uh, social media or send us an email at info at getoutanddrive.com. Tune in to the next episode. We'll be talking with uh, Ellie from Ellie's Garage. She's got a big following on uh, on Instagram. She and, does. Uh, and on YouTube. Great right. videos. Awesome in-depth, inter- interesting videos. Yeah, it'll be an interesting interview. Uh, she's part of our uh, What Drives Youth series that we're doing. Yep, great series. Uh, she's a 15-year-old girl yeah. that's uh, working with her dad, uh, restoring her dad dream car a 1965 ford falcon four-door wow so uh, she's getting really in-depth and uh learning hands-on uh yeah kind of, kind of the way a lot of people do yeah and uh yeah it'll be an interesting uh interview so yeah. stay tuned that'd be awesome sean we got some cool products from the people at super clean oh nice definitely need some stuff to clean up 
our uh, C-10 truck uh, that we call General, General Crustard. Crustard. That thing is a mess. It is, yeah. It's a 76 C-10 that we picked up a little bit ago. Uh, barn fine, dirty inside, One outside, order, top, underneath. Grandpa, unmolested, greasy, grimy, dirty farm truck. Yep, so these products will definitely come in handy cleaning that thing up. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some uh, videos on the cleanup on it. Mm -hmm. So people can go to our YouTube channel. Definitely. Uh, watch the videos. Uh, check out some pictures on social media. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, share, give us your comments. Tag us on Twitter at Get Out and Drive Pod. What drives youth?